Hello friends, my name is Alex and welcome back to Girl Check Betty. Today I'm going to be going over a couple different sunscreens and trying to find the best way to apply sunscreen over makeup. This is something that comes up really often in the makeup and the skincare communities, but unfortunately usually the answer that it boils down to is don't wear makeup on that day, which is just not really an answer. So what I'm going to do is I've put on a full face foundation, um, blush, bronzer, highlight. I've gone a lot heavier than I usually do, as you can see here, because I really want to show you if these um, sunscreens do start breaking down the makeup. So I've gone a lot heavier than I usually do, um, and I've done my eyebrows cheap, but that's it, since there's no point in doing um, eye makeup right now. So the uh, three main ways you can tackle this are there are powders that have SPF inside of them. I'm going to be ordering a few in a couple days, but I'm going to have to do this in a couple different chunks since we have so many different products. So starting off today, I'm going to be trying to apply um, liquid and cream sunscreens with beauty blenders to see how we do here. So. I have two beauty blenders. I have the Real Techniques uh, beauty blender, and then I have the Juno & Co. This one is supposed to be used dry uh, mainly, but you can get it wet and use it as well. I don't know if you can see it real well here, but the Juno & Co, it has this really fuzzy texture, so it's supposed to just have the product sit on top and not absorb as much as the Beauty Blender. And then these are very, very, very slightly damp, but not very damp. Um, when you're trying to apply sunscreen with a Beauty Blender, you don't want it to be really wet because that's gonna get into the sunscreen and dilute it, so you're not gonna get the full SPF. Um, and especially since we're trying to apply this over makeup, we want to have the highest SPF as possible. I have a couple different ones I'm gonna play around with here. First up, I have the Banana Boat Simply Protect Kids. This is a 50 SPF. This is a mineral sunscreen. It has 4.5% titanium dioxide and 6.5% zinc. And this is water resistant as well. Next, I have a chemical sunscreen. This is the one I use almost every day. This is the Skin Aqua. This is a SPF 50 and a PA rating of four. Those PA ratings aren't really, um, they're not on a scale, measurable scale. It's something that brands just like to chuck on the um, packaging, so you can't really go off those PAs, but this does have a SPF of 50. And then I want to do one that uh, most people will be able to get at their local stores. This is just a Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Dry Touch Sunscreen. This is a broad SPF of 55, and this is a chemical cream sunscreen. And then last for our little beauty blender experiment here, this is one I recently picked up. This is, uh, I bought it at Walmart for about $9. This is the Baby Ganix SPF 50. Uh, water resistant kids spray sunscreen. So you cannot spray um, sunscreen in a aerosol directly to your face because it's um, not healthy and the FDA has actually recommended directly against doing that. Um, but the back of this does say that you can spray it in your hands and then apply it to your face. So I'm wondering if we can actually just spray it really heavily on the beauty blender. I have seen some um, beauty YouTubers spray makeup setting spray really heavily directly to a beauty blender. So I'm wondering if we can do this too. So I have not used any setting spray. I have a liquid foundation and then everything else I'm using are powders, that's it. Um, I have let this set on my face for about half an hour before I started doing this. I don't have a sunscreen underneath. Um, usually if you were trying to give yourself as much time as possible before having to try to reapply sunscreen like this, you would want to start off with a base of sunscreen. Um, but since I know I'm going to be applying and then doing in the second round of reapplying on top, I did not um, start with a base because I want to try to have as few layers playing around as possible so I don't have any trouble. So let's start off with my tried and true real techniques 
um, blender here. I got the Juno & Co. Uh, a couple years ago um, because everyone on Instagram was going crazy over it, but I just don't like it. It's kind of scratchy um, on your face. So first up, I'm going to be trying the Skin Aqua, and I'm going really heavy with this. Um, when the SPF ratings are done on these guys, they are testing them on completely bare skin, and as much as we try, this is going to get diluted and kind of broken down with our makeup. It's real hard to get a clear um, or a furrow layer when we're um, applying over makeup. So I'm just going to go really, really heavy with this. So I've kind of scooted it around the edge, but I have this fully saturated here. Now this is a chemical sunscreen. I want to try with this one first because it has zero white cast. It is completely as uh, clear on the skin. So let's go ahead and try on this cheek first here and I'll try to get focused so you can see. So I'm just, I'm not gonna pull or try to blend. I'm just gonna really lightly pat to try to not break down my makeup here. And my sponge is absolutely saturated. So as you can see, this chemical sunscreen here, there is absolutely no change in tone. Let me bend down to my mirror here. It doesn't seem to be breaking up. I put some brown bronzer down um, by my jawline and it doesn't seem to be breaking up. And I don't really have any makeup picking up on my sponge here. I have a little bit of pink face paint that dyed this here, but um, none of my foundation seems to be coming off. So that seems to be doing really well. I was expecting it to break things up more. And then um, I'll do a little bit more on my chin where I have some highlighter going. Of I really don't think any of these um, different techniques that you're gonna be able to preserve your highlighter because um, it's such an iridescent product and you're gonna be layering on top of it. There's just no way to save it. So let's, and I'm just really fastly pouncing. I'm not dragging or trying to blend at all. Yeah, so my highlighter did not like that. Um, <laughs> the foundation looks fine. I put a little bit of highlighter just here. I usually don't do that, but I was trying to go really heavy with the makeup in all areas of my face. So everywhere we try, um, we can see what happens. So that did break up a tiny bit more than here for some reason. I went a bit heavier on my cheeks with the foundation than the um, chin area. So I stopped about here with the real techniques and now I'm going to switch over to the Juno & Co, which is the um, fuzzier sponge and I'm going to do right here, see how that does. So I'm just squirting a bit more of that Skin Aqua again. And so the Juno & Co sponge, like I said earlier, it does not absorb as well. As you can see, it's just kind of sitting on the surface there. It doesn't sink in like the other foam brushes. So I don't want to have a giant splodge just go straight on my face. So I'm trying to kind of scoot it around here. Might have used a bit too much, <laughs> but um, I'm just trying to get it barely absorbed so that it's not pooling, but that um, it is very saturated. Okay. So we're just going to go right here really lightly. Yeah, that definitely did pick up a lot more product than the real techniques. So I'm just really, really, really delicately patting. Trying not to... It's actually blending really well. And I did put blush right here and it seems to be holding up and I can feel um, the dampness of this so it definitely is spreading well. This feels like it's saturating well. So now I'm gonna leave that section of my face alone and we're gonna revisit in a couple hours and see what the makeup does. 
but now I am going to go ahead and flip over to the other side of my beauty blender here. So next up, I'm going to be using the other side of my Juno blender here so that I don't get it mixed up with the previous sunscreen. And I'm going to be trying the Simply Protect Kids by the Banana Boat. Now this is the mineral. I don't have high hopes for this guy because mineral sunscreens um, do usually have a white cast and you do have to mix them pretty well to get rid of that. So I've just squeezed a little bit on a different area that I haven't used. Yeah, just putting this on here, I don't have high hopes. So I'm not using a lot. I'm going real light with this and I'm really rubbing it into the beauty blender to get it saturated but not super like thick on the surface. So I'm gonna do my forehead right here and I'm just really lightly pouncing again. Yeah, that's very white. I don't have strong hopes for this. So I got it on with the blender. Um, I don't think this whiteness is going to go away just with my fingers. So I got it on. Now I'm just going to pat. I'm not rubbing. I'm just patting. Try to get this in. I almost wonder if one of those, um, those silicone beauty blenders that were really popular or not really popular, um, they tried to be popular <laughs> like two years ago. It was like this weird, um, almost looked like the rubber that they put inside of push-up bras that they were trying to market as beauty blenders. Okay, so I got that kind of blended in. Um, obviously from what you can see, it did give me full coverage of sunscreen there. I do, um, you can see the white cast from where it's not here and it's here. If you're really pale, you could probably get away with this. Um, but if you do have a deeper skin tone, I don't think you're going to be able to um, effectively apply a mineral sunscreen over makeup. It's just, you have to move it around and blend it so much to get rid of that white cast when you're applying it to bare skin, let alone over makeup. Okay, so there's that. <laughs> Not that great. Um... I'm going to try that same one on the real techniques now. I don't, I really don't have high hopes for this guy, but we'll try. I'm just doing a very, very, very tiny amount because this stuff is not nearly as forgiving as the chemical sunscreen. And again, I'm just rubbing it in here so I don't have a big goop. So let's go ahead and just do it here on the other side. Now this is actually, it's not quite as white. Um, I might like it better. I wasn't thinking this would work, but this is actually going on a lot better. Now there is still a definite white cast. I'm looking a lot paler here than I am down here. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be breaking up the foundation. I'm looking at my mirror below my camera here. It did completely wipe out. I had some highlight here and you can't see it at all underneath all this white cast, but that's actually not too bad. It did blend out fine, uh, but the foundation seems intact underneath. Like I can't see any of my blemishes or freckles under there. Um, so the foundation is still there. It's just a lot paler now. Okay, so next we're going to be trying the Neutrogena Ultra Sheer. This is a chemical sunscreen, so I'm hoping that this won't have as much of a white cast here. Let's start off with the Juno & Co. Just going to squirt a fair amount on here. And then stuff is thick. Um, it looks like a mineral sunscreen, but it is chemical. It has that really creamy, like, um, lifeguard on the nose <laughs> looking uh, sunscreen. So I'm just squishing it out here so I don't have any giant globs getting it real saturated. Okay, so let's go ahead and do right here. 
Okay, we got some definite white cast. Uh, one thing, I don't personally really like this sunscreen. It has a really, really, really strong alcohol scent. Um, I would not recommend it for those with really sensitive skin. Okay, so we got some white cast going on. You can still see my blush really clearly where it ends and starts here, so it's not breaking it up. It is absorbing a lot easier, like I barely patted that, and it's already pretty much blended itself out here. You can see that it's paler than the rest of the skin, but it's not breaking up the makeup, like you can't see any smears of like bare skin in between, so that's interesting. It actually, now that it's absorbing more, that white cast is going away. It's a little bit whiter than the Skin Aqua on this side. But I feel like it applied better because it is a thicker formula, so you have more to play with. That's actually not too bad. Okay, so let's, using the same Neutrogena, I'm gonna bounce back to my Real Techniques. Get a little splodge in there, rub it out. So let's just do by my eye and right underneath. I want to leave a little bit of room for that spray sunscreen. Okay, so I definitely, with the real techniques, it's breaking up more right here. The foundation's definitely getting more patchy, if you can see that. It's, it's kind of doing that, uh, it's sinking into your pores where you can see the pigment of the foundation more. So... It didn't do it nearly as bad with the Juno and Co. up here, but down here, okay, that's definitely breaking up. The Skin Aqua didn't do it right here. This is where I have um, the most issues with stuff sinking in my pores. I did put on the um, the Ordinary Silicone uh, Primer before putting on my foundation, so it usually doesn't do this, but it's really breaking up there. So that's definitely not awesome. That's the Neutrogena with the real techniques. So that is not working at all. The Juno and Co. with the Neutrogena did work, but real techniques is not cutting it there. Okay, so I am going to go rinse out these beauty blenders so I can try with the spray sunscreen on this little bit here. I have pretty much ran out of space, so I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I have cleaned up my two beauty blenders here, so I have a fresh slate to try our last little bit of bare face, or at least bare sunscreen, <laughs> with the spray. So I'm going to start off with the Juno and Co, and we're going to be going in with the B Kids. So the you can use the product itself on the face, it's just it's not safe to um, spray it where you can breathe in that. So I'm gonna spray this pretty heavy on my June Co. So I've sprayed it really good there and then I'm just gonna rub it in. Now I have used this on bare skin and I really like it. This is a fragrance-free formula. I have really dry, sensitive skin and I have liked it. I don't use a lot of um, sprays, but so let's go right here with this guy. So you can definitely see where I'm putting it down. Now on, um, when I applied this just to bare skin, it didn't have a white cast. I'm hoping this will absorb. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that there. Oh, you can definitely see the white, but um, chemical sunscreens, they do tend to fade more as they absorb because they do absorb into the skin instead of forming a layer like minerals. So I'm just gonna leave that alone there and then let's do the other side with my Real Techniques blender. So again, I just sprayed it real heavy on the blender here, and now I'm going to rub it in so I don't have any real big splotches. And then we'll go in on the other side. 
I think the real techniques is applying a bit better. Just to recap, we have Skin Aqua here, the Simply Protect Kids here, the Neutrogena here, and then the spray here. So I am going to let this hang out on my skin for two hours and then I'll come back and reapply. Um, you are supposed to be reapplying these sunscreens every two hours. So let's see how this first coat does over the makeup and then we'll come back and see if we can um, make it withstand another coat. Okay, so it has been over two hours since I applied everything. Nothing has degraded drastically um, since earlier today, but you can definitely see on this side where I put the Neutrogena, it's just broken up really badly. You can see it all here. The Skin Aqua side looks great. It hasn't broken up at all. Um, where I use the spray right underneath the Neutrogena also looks really good. Um, I might almost say this part looks better than the Skin Aqua, because the Skin Aqua, you can't see it breaking down, but I think it did sheer down um, a fair bit. But over here where I did the spray, it does look like still completely full coverage there. And then my forehead where I did the um, Banana Boat, this side was the um, Juno & Co, and this was the Real Techniques. They both look about the same, and um, they've both sheared out. It does still look a fair bit paler here, um, rather than my cheeks. So overall, I think I do like the Skin Aqua the most. The spray did keep the full coverage, but it is a pain to use and you have that aerosol. So I am going to go ahead, I'm definitely not reapplying the Neutrogena because it looks horrible. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to go ahead and reapply the Skin Aqua on both my cheeks and then I'll do the Banana Boat on my forehead just to keep things. And then overall I think I definitely like the Real Techniques more than the Juno. Um, application wise the Real Techniques it just feels better. They both, like I can't really tell the difference between the Juno and the Real Techniques here or here. Um, but just like feeling it while you're applying it. The Juno & Co. is just kind of prickly and it doesn't feel great. So I've just put on a good squeeze of the Skin Aqua. And I'm just going to go all over here. And this is where I had put the Skin Aqua earlier today. So my blush is still holding up pretty good. You can see the difference of where it was. And I'm just lightly pouncing that again. And I'm, I'm curious to see what this will do when I put it over where the Neutrogena was earlier. Um, I mean, I can't make it worse because this had just disintegrated really badly. And then I will go ahead and put more of the Banana Boat on my forehead using a clean spot of my sponge. But I'm still going to use the real technique. So... I really don't think you're getting different results versus the Juno and the Real Techniques. The Real Techniques, it's easier to clean. Um, I've noticed that the Juno, it clings really badly and you have to use a ton of soap compared to the Real Techniques when trying to get it clean. Um, and then since I am doing both sides of my forehead, I am going to reapply to get um, full coverage, you do want to be sure you're going really heavy with this stuff, especially since you're using the Beauty Blender to make sure you get a full coat of sun protection. You definitely don't want to skimp. And just like earlier, this is going on real white, but after it um, settled in, it did absorb really well. So, and I'm not expecting any huge difference between now and our last two hour check-in, but I'm going to let this hang out on my skin, wait another two hours and see if anything else happens. So far, we're doing really good um, beyond this one area with Neutrogena. My makeup is all hanging in pretty good. It hasn't broken down, but definitely at the start of the day, um, my face was looking a lot more uh, tan than my neck, but we're about on even ground now. So I do have some definite white cast going on, but I do still have full coverage and I don't have any 
um, real bad blemishes peeking through. So that's encouraging. So I will sign off for a couple more hours and then check in and let you know how I'm doing. Okay, I am back. It is just after 7 p.m. I started this whole process at noon, so it's been seven hours since I started off. Um, this side where we did the Neutrogena is looking super, super rough, as you can see, and I accidentally scratched my nose here, so <laughs> that's what's happening. Um, so that's looking horrible. Um, right here is where I use the spray sunscreen and it's actually looking really good. So I've been inside all day. And then this is the side where I did the skin aqua. It is, it did sheer out the foundation, but it's uh, very subtle. It hasn't broken down like Neutrogena did. The Neutrogena broke down and sheared out, but it really sunk in and it's just, um, looks really crackly. Over here looks just fine. And then up here is where I did the Nana Boat and I did two coats of it and two coats of the Skin Aqua. And my bronzer is still here. The blush has broken down a, bit, a fair bit and my highlight's completely gone, but I was expecting that. There's just no way you can make highlight um, survive for multiple <laughs> coats of sunscreen. Um, but the Banana Boat looks is looking really good there. So overall, I would say um, if you have really pale skin, you can probably get away with the Banana Boat, which is a mineral sunscreen. You're probably going to get about the same performance from any mineral cream sunscreen. They all um, apply about the same. Um, there's not too much variation there. The chemical did a lot better. I would say if you have a deeper skin tone, um, probably go towards a chemical because it's just really hard to get a mineral rubbed in enough. Or, and just pat it enough to get the white cast uh, blended out sufficiently and it's just going to be really hard to do that on anyone without insanely pale skin like me. Um, but I really like how the chemical cream did here. And then the spray did well It's over here and that's with um, applying with the Real Techniques um, sponge there. I really like how it did. It does definitely feel a bit tighter over here. I definitely feel like I used a really heavy like makeup setting spray over here. So um, if you're not a fan of that feeling. So I would definitely steer you towards using something like the Skin Aqua if you want a really light fresh feeling. I did apply it twice and everything is still looking pretty good. Um, as I said earlier, I went really heavy with my bronzer and you can see that it's still pretty substantially there. If you just want something uh, mineral sunscreen, if you're sensitive to chemicals or chemical uh, formula sunscreens, definitely check this one out. It did pretty well. My The foundation did not break up on my forehead almost at all. I don't have any of this weird coloring that the Neutrogena did up on my forehead. It's looking pretty good. And then definitely skip this guy. It was just didn't hold up. It, for regular use, just on bare skin, it's fine. And I've reapplied this in the past over and over and it doesn't pill, um, but it just did not do well here. And then again, the spray that I used on this is the Bee Kids. Um, it's Baby Ganix. I picked it up at Walmart. It is a chemical and it's water resistant. It was about $9. So I just sprayed it really um, thick on the beauty blender and just lightly patted it down here. Um, this would be a pain to carry around with you like in a purse. I personally don't like carrying aerosol things in my purse because I've done that before and accidentally like had the nozzle pressed down and absolutely wrecked my bag. So I like the cream containers better for on the go. But that wraps up this little experiment here. I'm actually really happy about how well those two did. Not so much on the Neutrogena, but in a few days, I'm going to also be picking up a couple different high SPF pressed powders. So if you're looking for a matte look, that would definitely be um, the realm of products you would want to look into. All of the ones that I use today are probably only going to always give you like a dewy finish. It's really hard to get a matte finish with the sunscreens and 
these would not do well put over really heavy powders. Um, as I said at the beginning of this video, I only did a cream foundation. I did not use a setting powder or any powder foundations, and then I just went over with my bronzer, um, blush, and highlight. So I didn't have any heavy powders on here. I think if you mixed powders and a foundation in at the same time, you're going to get some weird clumping action going on. Um, but if you want to see what happens down the road with those SPF pressed powders, if you're more into a matte makeup look, then definitely subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll have that up pretty quick. I'm just waiting on a couple things in the mail, and then I'm going to be testing out each one to see how they do. But thank you so much for watching, guys, and hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!